Hey everybody, welcome back to Miss Robinson's class. I am here today with a math video to cover lesson 3.1. In lesson 3.1, we're gonna start talking about multiplication and really figuring out what is multiplication. What I can tell you is that multiplication really is repeated addition. That's the way that we wanna think about it. Multiplication just represents repeatedly adding the same number to itself multiple times. Another thing that we wanna keep in mind for this video are the math vocabulary words that we need to familiarize ourselves with. The first vocabulary word that I want us to get familiar with and get comfortable with is the word factor. What is a factor? A factor is a number that is being multiplied. So if I have the multiplication problem two times three, the number two is a factor, and the number three is a factor because they are the numbers that are being multiplied. The next vocabulary term that we want to get comfortable with is the word product. Products are answers to multiplication problems. So again, using the example of two times three, we know that two is one of my factors, three is one of my factors. I know that two times three is equal to six, so I would say the product of two times three is six because product is the mathematical way to represent or say an answer in dealing with multiplication. So today, Today's video, we're gonna talk about what is multiplication, how is it related to addition, and make sure that we understand how to model multiplication problems when we understand that when we are multiplying, we are dealing with equal groups of something. It could be equal groups of coins, equal groups of people, equal groups of cars. It's just making sure that we know that multiplication represents repeated addition of equal groups. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples, and then I will come back in the very end and give you some closing thoughts, and then we will be done for the day. All right, so here's our first example. In this example, we are going to be multiplying six times four. Six is one of my factors and four is my other factor. I know because I just said and I know that you guys are paying attention that my first factor, which in this case would be the number six, is telling me that I'm going to be dealing with six equal groups in this particular example. My second factor, which in this case will be the number four, is telling me how many of whatever I'm dealing with, how many items are in each of those six equal groups. So to remind myself that six or my first factor represents the number of groups, I like to put a box around that one. And then to remind myself that my second factor, in this case four, represents how many in each group, I always put a circle around the second factor so that I don't model incorrectly based on the problem that I've been given. So since I know that there are going to be four items in each of my group, I'm gonna start by making four counters. So here's one, two, three, and four. That's just four counters to represent how many are gonna be in equal or in each group. Now, since I know that there are going to be a total of six groups, I'm going to draw six counters going across. I should recognize that I already have one counter. So if I already have one counter to represent my first group, I should recognize then that I only need to draw five more. So here's my first group, group two, group three, group four, group five, and group six. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal groups ready to go. So that's just the beginning. I'm not done yet because I only have one group of four and I just said that I need six groups of four each. I need my groups to be equal and right now they are unequal. So I'm gonna go through each of my groups, group two, three, four, five, and six, and make sure that I have four counters in each. And I'm gonna use a different color so that we can tell the difference. So this group already has one, two, three, four. Next group, one, two, three, Four. next group one two three four next group one two I'm sorry one two three and four next group one two three and four so now I'm gonna double check do I have six groups going across one two three four five six yes do I have four in each group one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So yes, I'm good there. Now the next thing I need to do is, okay, now that I've drawn my diagram and I've made my six equal groups of four, I need to know what my answer is. 
What is this telling me six times four is equal to? So to do that, I'm gonna count how many counters do I have in all? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I have 24 in all. Or if I want to diagram how many I have in all so that I can skip count, I can tell myself I know there's one, two, three, four here. Five, six, seven, eight, that makes eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, that makes 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, that makes 16. 17, 18, 19, 20. And then 21, 22, 23, 24. That's another way that I could have done it. So I have 24 counters in all. So if I have six groups going across, four in each group, because I know I'm dealing with equal groups, and I've counted and I know I have 24 in all, that means the product to six times four is going to be 24. Thanks to our model that we drew out. Now the next example I'm gonna show you is going to be a little bit different, but it's gonna still follow the same steps of making sure that we know what our factors are, that our first factor represents the number of groups, that our second factor represents how many groups, and then we're gonna use our diagram or our model to figure out our product based on what we've drawn. So give me one second and I'll get the second example set up for you. Okay, here's my second example that looks a little bit different to start. So in this example, my first factor is three. So I know that I will be dealing with three equal groups. My second factor is five, which tells me in each of my equal groups, I will have five counters or five marks to represent that I am dealing with equal groups. So I'm going to just make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put a box around the three so that I know that that is the number of groups. I'm gonna circle the five so I know that that tells me how many to put in each group. And then I'm gonna to go to there. So here's my three equal groups already drawn out for me. Now I need to look here and it tells me that I need five in each group. So I'm gonna take care of one group at a time and make sure that I have five marks or five X's or five counters in each group. So there's one, two, three, four, five. My first group is taken care of. Second group, one, two, three, four, and five. That's my second group taken care of. And now to my third group, one, two, three, four, five. Good, so I've made three groups. And in each group, I've made five marks or put in five counters. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I have two options. I can count each counter that I've drawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 15 if I look at it that way. Or I can look at each group and count group by group, which represents me skip counting. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that tells me that I have 15, just like it did when I counted each counter one by one by one. So again, I need to now interpret my diagram or my model and ask myself, what does this tell me about the problem three times five. You should recognize that this tells me and this tells you that the product of three times five is equal to 15. Easy, right? So I drew out my three groups, put five in each group, counted them one at a time, tried skip counting, I did that as well. And I should see that I am using repeated addition. Five plus another five is 10 plus another five is gonna be 15. I'm adding the same number each time and I'm doing that three times because my first factor told me to do that three times. So those are my two examples that I have for you guys. I am going to flip my camera around and then I'll give you some closing thoughts for this lesson. All right, so those were your examples. So just a couple of quick things that we wanna remember. We wanna remember the word factor. Factors are numbers that are being multiplied in a multiplication sentence. We want to remember the word product. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. We also want to remember that our first factor in our multiplication sentence tells us 
How many equal groups are we dealing with? The second factor in our multiplication problem always tells us, well, how many are in each of those equal groups? Those things should always be in your mind when you're dealing with multiplication. And just remind yourself that when we are multiplying, we are really just adding over and over and over again. So today's lesson was just an opportunity to show you how we can use models to help us multiply and figure out how many we have in all, however many things we're looking at. How many stickers do we have in all? How many puppies do we have in all? How many cars do we have in all? So I hope you think, I hope that you found those examples helpful and that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up so that Miss Robinson stays encouraged to keep making these videos and putting them out there for you guys. Other than that, I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. <laughs>